This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader who's going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we are covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan of the series, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. Before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Chandra Kutno to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. We're super excited to have your support, and we really want to thank you for your generosity. We also want to acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 43 and 44 of The Dragon Reborn. Yeah, so chapter 43, we have Shadow Brothers, and chapter 44 is Hunted. I have to tell you, I read Shadow Brothers as Wolf Brothers. Oh, that's not like it at all. No. <laughs> no. And then by the end I went, oh. Oh, this is this is bad. This is different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get like lots of really good stuff in these two chapters. Yeah. And they work together really well. I like when they're like lining up really nicely. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're good. So I'm going to kick us off with a fun fact. Of course and you this are. is a bit of an extension from the previous one when we were talking about the petrosomatoglyphs. Very, very cool. Yeah, I know you're excited about it, but I kind of like, you know, hinted at the end of last chapter when I gave you that fun fact about Old Grim. It all kind of works together. That's why I wasn't sure if I was going to do it like right now or last chapter, but it all kind of worked out anyways. Okay, I have to tell you, there's been a lot of people reaching out in favor of your fun facts. That's exciting. Yeah, nobody's siding with me at all. Hey, I'm excited about that. That's good. I know, and I knew... I know people like it. I don't know if I was going to like, you know, stop anyways, because I enjoy it. (laughs) That's what I said. I was like, Brett loves it too much. I'm going to force you to listen to my rants. Yeah, there are people who are saying things like, oh, please don't stop them, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, Brett will never stop them. Even if you guys tell him to stop them, he (laughs) won't. It turns out it was just one person who said that. So we're taking your opinion. Yeah. All right. So (laughs) this is a bit of an extension from the Black Shuck or the Old Shuck, which is the hound of British lore that we talked about. And it's recorded as like an omen of death and evil, etc., etc. Uh, described as a shaggy black dog with fiery eyes. And it can be the size of a large dog to as big as a horse. And obviously with these chapters, with the whole introduction of dark hounds, this is huge. Now in the whole like British lore, the accounts come as early as 1127 BCE. And they're included in a phenomenon known as the Wild Hunt. So this is actually a real thing in like real life, not just in the Wheel of Time. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I didn't know that. So a wild hunt is a motif in ancient folklore, and it usually involves a soul-raving chase led by a mythological figure escorted by a group of supernatural hunters. So the heroic figure is typically associated with Odin, but it can be a historical or legendary figure or king or even biblical figures like Cain, Gabriel, or the devil. Ooh. So when we got the whole like description of the wild hunt and old Grim, obviously it's old Grim is like Shaitan, the dark one, who's leading the wild hunt. And then the hunters are typically souls of the dead or ghostly dogs in British folklore. Mm. So it works really well with the whole like dark hounds thing we get an introduction to. And then lastly, the same thing that's like basically the same in both real life and in the wheel of time is that seeing this hunt is usually a precursor to some catastrophe or war Ooh, it's like a dark omen basically what it is so that's but essentially what the grim is also right yeah, yeah i just really like it because like the whole wild hunt the dark hounds the old grim it's all actually like taken right out of you know folklore and pretty much like plopped into the wheel of time very cool yeah Thanks for that one. You're welcome. I know you like that one. So (laughs) let's talk about these Shadow Brothers. Yeah. But before we do that, I'm going to recap last time. Oh, yeah. Okay. So last time, Perrin and that whole crew got to Ilion, and then they were attacked at the inn by six gray men, and Moraine stormed off somewhere without Lan. Yes. That was huge. Yeah. And then Matt is on his way to Camelin with Tom. They had encountered the Illuminator and that whole thing, but now they are traveling by horse. On way to Camelin. Right. Yeah, and these are interesting. We get a touch of both, so. Exactly. So, chapter 43, Shadow Brothers, and and there's the wolf picture. You read that as Wolf Brothers, so you just like. Briefly. Skipped it. Briefly. Okay. But it's fine. Okay, we'll loop back to that then when it comes up again. It's fine. Okay, so we get Perrin's perspective. We are at the end, essentially right after everything went down. Yes. And everything sort of like goes back to normal a little bit, but everyone's on edge for sure. 
the lady who was singing inappropriate songs found out Moraine was an Aes Sedai and now is embarrassed to sing risque songs. Well, I, I gotta <laughs> say, I really love this, like, first paragraph because, like, considering what just happened, Perrin's listening to this song and he's realizing that this whole Mistress Enora's rooster turns out is actually about a rooster. Yeah. So I kind of, like, in, in my head canon, it's like, this is the clean version of the not-so-clean song. Because uh-huh. roosters. Roosters. Uh, uh, yeah, you get it? I got okay, it. Okay. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So Lan asks Perrin how he noticed those gray men. Yes. Because their type of evil is not strong enough to be sensed by him and Moraine. And Perrin says, oh no, I smelled them. Smelled them. Yeah. <laughs> Got to really get, just follow your nose. Yeah. And so Lan says, we should all go look outside for anything unusual. And he wants Perrin and Loyal's good eyesight out in the dark. Yes. Yeah, so just kind of like a big asterisk beside this whole gray man thing. I just want to point out that it does seem that these gray men, although they are not evil, and I'll say that with quotations enough to be sensed, they do kind of seem to have some sort of like supernatural ability to, you know, evade the eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I just want to point that out just in case like we had missed it or hadn't talked about it enough. Not supernatural enough that if an Aes Sedai throws a fireball at you, you don't die. Exactly. Which is what I thought. (laughs) You get roasted. (laughs) Yeah, I thought. And then old Billy hauls you into the canal. But yeah, because Lan just kind of like emphasizes like, hey, they can walk past 100 guards and warders and nobody like sees them. And like you saw them. Yes. You smell them. Yes. Well, (laughs) that's true. So Zareen goes with them, but is definitely confused about what's going on. By the way... Zareen and Fail are still interchangeable names at this point. Okay. It's just, just whatever as, your brain did in, in, the, in the moment. As a heads up. <laughs> so don't take offense to it if you're like, no, not that's taking not a side. I, I think you got to pick a side here. Like, you are know you what? On... I have to tell you by the end of this episode, yeah. I will have chosen a side. Okay. Okay. I kind of think I know what you're going to get. Like, it's okay. Anyways, yeah. Okay. So when they get outside, Perrin notes that he smells this like sulfuric smell in the air, and it's one like he smelled before yeah i remember when i was like hey by the way don't skip that Perrin yeah. smells like sulfur yes. and sees a dog's paw in the stone and you're like ever heard of cement i know so i learned a lesson here <laughs> yes so even dumb nothing details that i write off as stupid yeah are important in robert jordan's writing everything matters everything matters <laughs> everything's so important yeah so there's that. That's true. Okay, so Lan sees these two big dog paw prints in the stone by the inn, and this is where the burned sort of sulfur smell is strongest, and Parent thinks, that's stupid. Dogs don't make footprints in stones. True, dogs don't. But they're not dogs. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah, dark house. They're dark house. They're dark yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just like more shadow spawn. Yes, that's what it seems like. Okay, and they were clearly hunting Perrin, except by the end, we get that they necessarily weren't. Yeah, so So, this is like a kind of, like, we got to talk a little bit about this. It seems like at this point, the Dark Hounds were reporting, or the Dark Hound was reporting. They were hunting. Hunting, scouting, looking for. And now they're reporting back to their master. Yes. For what they found. Exactly. Exactly. And this is really important because later on we get information about the uh, the gray men. So right, okay. So Zareen says something about the old Grim riding the wild hunt and how she thought that that was just a story. Yeah, and super relevant. Just ex- everything we've already kind of like discussed with that glossary definition. Right, and you know. Maybe I didn't pay as close attention to the glossary definition. Oh, uh, okay. There it is. There were... it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because I went to the glossary to read it yeah. again. Like the whole, um, I went to see about the old Grim. Okay. Or the, no, the Shadow Hounds, Dark Hounds. Dark Hounds. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Okay. It's okay. You got it. <sighs> it's, a is, it's a new It's a new Shadow new. Spawn. It's new. Okay. New terms. So I went and then it directed me to Wild Hunt. Yes. So and then there was some information that I don't think you shared no, with I, me. No, I read the entire description. Okay. You just 100% <laughs> didn't listen. Okay, I'll, I'll recap. So the Dark One in Ilian and Tyr, like the Southern countries... The dark ones known as like Grim or Old Grim. Yeah. So that's just what they call him. Yeah, I and remember says, that part. Yeah, and it says, or the like the story say that he rides out in the night with the black dogs or the dark hounds hunting souls. Yeah. Relevant with that fun fact. Yeah, yeah, see? okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So this is the wild hunt. And then Rain keeps Dark Hounds out. Are you sure of the you night. shared that part? Oh, with I me? sure did. Yep. Okay. 100%. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I haven't edited that episode yet. Like, I'll read it. <laughs> like, I'll know it once I hear it again. Don't try and cut it out because I know I 100% said I'm gonna it. I'm going to cut it out and be like, see? I'm going to post my notes and I'm it's like, joking. it's all here. I know, I know. <laughs> so, once they're on the trail, though, they have to be confronted or defeated or the victim's death is inevitable. Land backs that up later on. And then it's believed that merely seeing the wild hunt pass means imminent death either for the viewer or someone dear to the viewer so exactly like that old uh british folklore we talked about right 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 the whole omen thing exactly okay so lan says the dark one isn't free but dark hounds are real and they are almost as dangerous as fades and then she says oh sure bring fetches into it so yeah that's and that whole fetches fetch the like southern right. but it is important to note there what land says he says they're almost as dangerous as fades and harder to kill harder to kill and we can kind of speculate as to why but it's easy because like they're dogs versus like intelligent fades right so that's like the easy way to figure that out okay now i'm a little bit confused as to why zareen sure is talking about all of the southern versions or names for all of these things because sure. i thought her name was saldean i thought she was from saldea well that's what moraine said she says it's like a saldean name we don't actually have confirmation of that oh and we do know that zareen when we first like well met yeah her, i know she was in alien she, she was an alien well, i thought that she went there to take the oath and go for the hunt i thought she came from saldea Okay. No, we don't know that. Oh, that's what I assumed. And so then I was confused. That's all. Yeah, Maureen was just Saldea like... Saldea is it's... not south. No, it's north. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, oh my God, everything's real. And I was like, well, in Saldea, didn't they have a whole bunch of like trollic attacks and have a tear... Like two winters ago, it was like awful. And no. in Saldea... Interesting to note that. Ah. Uh, okay. Are you back on like Dark Friend Watch? Not or... even a little oh, okay. bit. No, nope. <laughs> but what can I say to okay. Perrin is though? <laughs> oh, of course. By he the is, end of like... Perrin's perspective here, he is questioning this lady. But like sorta, because it's like also he questions... progressively, he's like, oh, she's more and more beautiful. So like, I don't know. Yeah, but then that makes her more and more dangerous. Right. That's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Perrin wants to know why Lan and Moraine didn't sense the Dark Hound, and Lan says. I don't know. <laughs> well, he says he says that, but there's yeah. like a little more. He says, I hope the answer doesn't kill us all. And I doubt we'll stay the night. Yeah. We'll probably ride when Maureen is back. I asked you last episode, where do you think Maureen is going? And now that you know that dark hounds are like a thing. Yeah. Now, what are your speculations? Well, I don't have to speculate because I know where she went. Fair. Rephrase. I'll rephrase that. Because then. I said she's probably going to go take a little spy peek at this look -see. <laughs> at this lord bren to okay. see like what the heck's going on so when you were reading that did that kind of like connect really fast or no did... okay <laughs> not no not till after no i don't know i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay so len tells them yeah to go get some sleep and he's gonna go after moraine to tell her what they have found here and they'll be riding hard soon yes so. i love his rationale too he's like oh she can't be bad yeah <laughs> she didn't know about the dark hound yeah <laughs> <laughs> so lan sets out Perrin goes to his room and he thinks that he has to find out something yes i gotta find out i gotta find out so he gets into bed and he also thinks about how he didn't light the candle before going to sleep yeah did you also notice that the rain started falling no okay well the rain started to fall right now <laughs> okay. so so we get a dream sequence a rather confusing one i have to say so Perrin is actually meaning to enter his dreams yeah this time yeah whereas before he's like really 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 fighting it yes so this reminds me of Egwene in literally every sense everything that happens in the next page or so is almost like mirroring Egwene okay so Egwene wants to find out information about the black aja and she goes into the dream world and says i need to find out information about the black aja yes and she goes in and then she sees all these sort of prophetic things about perrin and about rand and about and she's like this is useless i don't understand any of it yeah exactly and then you know eventually she comes out of it but perrin here thinks i need to find out more information about 
who's after me and stuff. So what are you saying? He goes into the dream world and he like literally does exactly what Egwene's doing. So so what are you saying? I don't know. I'm just making a comparison. Okay. So do they? She's have like a this... dreamer. He's a dreamer. I do guess. they have the same? That's what I'm saying. It's like, are you saying that they have like the same ability? Or I think is that it they like... have a very similar ability. Whether okay. his is connected to wolves specifically and hers is connected to just being really powerful with the source and now she has a terrain grill. Yeah. Okay. So it, it doesn't really matter to me. So it's like same, same, but it's different, exactly, but still same. It's exactly. It was just very reminiscent, especially considering everything he sees here before he sees Hopper. Yeah. Yeah. Well put. So he gets some almost prophetic visions yes. of his friends. He does. So at first things are really weird. There's a tall, slender man dressed in like all fancy clothes. And he appears in the dream holding a sword shining like the sun then he sits on a throne and kings and queens grovel before him. Yeah, so any ideas nope. who that might be? No. Okay. Maybe the guy who's ruling in tier right now, the Forsaken guy. Uh, who's, okay. Who's probably we, a Forsaken. Well, that would kind of make sense with everything that's going on. If he really wants Kalendor. Like, yeah. That's what I assumed this bright sword was yeah well we had that old lady who was like oh who kind of like shoot Egwene away and was like he's coming to stare at it again someone's coming so and then we also had like nieta was having like bad dreams about lord brend too that's true so so then perrin is looking for hopper but can't find him and then he sees a vision of matt dicing with baalzaman yeah that's kind of fun okay yeah yeah and then we also get Egwene, nynaeve and elaine springing some trap getting locked in a cage and some like woman with braids laughing at them yeah and we do know who has braids yeah okay. it's either leandrin or eludra <laughs> <laughs> right but then we have a woman all in white who is laughing at the woman in braids right which is celine okay. oh no lanfear lanfear <laughs> god you gotta break that habit i really do okay okay so perrin calls out again for hopper and says i need you and then hopper appears yeah but he goes, it's dangerous. You've been warmed. You're too new. You're too young. Get out of here. And Perrin wants to know if the things that he's seeing here are real. And Hopper gives him like this stupid answer. All things are real and not real. Well, it sounds kind of like everything we've heard before already. Uh, it's where just it's like, like literally nothing. But it's like, hey, even though like dreams aren't real, but they're real because there's consequences. So like stuff happens and they can affect you. So it sounds like just a wolf way of saying it is real, but it isn't real, but it is real. So, like, you're, you're in danger. Right. Okay. Well, whatever. So, Perrin wants to know why he saw Lanfear and Baalzaman last time. Get some cool nicknames here. Yeah. Baalzaman's Heart Fang. Yeah, we've heard that before. And then Lanfear is Moon Hunter. Oh, they, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So, Hopper says that the last hunt is coming. And Perrin tells Hopper that the Grey Men were hunting him. And Hopper says slash thinks the not dead hunt you yeah so gray men have cool nicknames too from wolves yeah so perrin says yes and dark hounds and hopper says oh no shadow brothers and that's when you looked at the chapter title and we're like oh, oh no oh okay, <laughs> okay. Got, got it so dark hounds are, are the shadow, shadow brothers. brothers which makes sense because they're essentially like wolves but shadow versions they're like evil wolves or yes. something okay yeah gotcha. shadow wolves shadow, shadow brothers, brothers. Yeah. yeah yeah they're shadow brothers exactly yeah, there you go okay. figure it out and then hopper says you must flee the shadow brothers and then hopper leaps at him knocking him backwards and then Perrin is like falling and wakes up yes so one thing i do want to kind of point out is in this conversation Perrin's asking a bunch of questions and the only thing he's getting back is nicknames for things in wolf speak which i think is pretty cool it's almost like Perrin is telling hopper what's going on and hopper's like oh these things are going on those are all like, bad yeah but then he also references the last hunt yeah and then Perrin is very confused about what the last hunt is. Yeah. So I just have like... I think that's wolf speak for the last battle. The last hunt would be the last battle? Isn't that a thing? Isn't the last battle a thing? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes, the last battle is a thing. Okay. Yeah, Tarman Gaiden. That's right. Yeah. Yes, we know that. I think that's just a wolf nicknamey name for... And that, that's all it is? There's no bells and whistles that's just like a translation like i don't think there needs to be bells and whistles okay, there's okay. no bells and whistles well for perrin a seems very confused perrin about like... is always very confused <laughs> like he, even when he wakes up he's like oh what was the last hunt i don't know yeah i know <laughs> and like he knows that there's like the last battle and yeah, that's like he sort of knows okay perrin is 
often in denial about things that are extremely obvious. Oh. And is confused about things that if he just sat and, like, I feel like he does too much The over textbook overthinker. Yeah, where he's like, oh, the, none of this makes any sense. But, he, you know, he has all the pieces. He just doesn't link them together. Okay. It's kind of like the whole, like, you know, this cute girl is sitting in the corner staring at me. And I'm like a young, handsome, Jack dude. Yeah. She must be a dark friend. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's like exactly that. like that. It's like, yeah, <laughs> uh, you missed it. I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> he wakes up and he notices the candle is lit in his room. Yes. And he's like, hey, I didn't light a candle. <laughs> oh, and then, but, oh. Well, also right before he went to bed. He thinks. Well, Fayil was trying to come into his room with him. And she, he like he shut the door. He kicked her out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah okay <laughs> so then he thinks yeah what does that mean the last hunt and zareen is sitting in the room just like staring at him yeah and she goes you talk and thrash in your sleep <laughs> so she, she's sitting yeah. there watching him sleep and she is very interested in perrin like since he's taviran and literally everything about him she makes a good case because yeah. she's like so you're taviran you've got weird eyes Gray men want to kill you. You travel with an Aes Sedai, a warder, and O'Gear. You free to cage Dael. You killed a bunch of white cloaks. Who are you? Yep. The dragon reborn? Oh, hilarious. And what? he's like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> no way. And then she says, you could do with a little more hair on your chest, though. Oh. And then he becomes suddenly aware that he's in his undies. Yes, he is. His, what are they, like breeches or something? Under breeches. Under breeches. Because breeches are pants. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So... Perrin suddenly remembers Min telling him that he should run from a beautiful woman and thinks, did she mean Zareen? And I just go, probably oh, not. So she's beautiful now. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. More beautiful than Lanfear. No. Well, that's what he's thinking. No, he's not. I uh, mean, maybe. I don't know. No, okay. he is not saying, no, he is not <laughs> thinking that. It's actually quite the opposite. Sure. He's like, I always thought the beautiful woman Min was talking about was Lanfear because I'd never seen anyone as beautiful as her. Okay. And Interpret it how you want. I will. Yeah. So he demands to know who she is. Yes. He just basically turns it around on her. Yeah. He, she, she's like, who are you? And he's like, no, who are you? Yeah. So this is going great. It's a good case. And <laughs> she says that she is Fael, a hunter for the horn and not the woman of his dreams. Which makes him jump because he's just thinking about, you know, Lanfear, the woman of his dreams. Literally the woman in his dreams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's why he's like, oh my God. Yeah. What? But probably Textbook not. Textbook overthinker. So, like, here's a, here's a thing, because we kind of know that, like, Lanfear can change your appearance. Lanfear doesn't have time for this shit. Are you any, telling me? Any chance? No. Any chance? Not even. Not even. Let me get my question, because some people might. So, is Zareen <laughs> Lanfear? No. Okay. Of course not. Lanfear does not have time to well, play this part. No. Okay. Okay, I just, I, I gotta the ask questions. The only time she, she tried to do this before and it failed. Yeah, well, she, she tried like She tried it. to play a part with Rand, no, Rand. <clears throat> she tried to play that part with Rand the whole way through the Portal Stone world and it really didn't work for her. I doubt she's doing it again. Fair, with, okay. With like not another her, like, ex-boyfriend. stupid farm boy and yeah. not, yeah, her ex-boyfriend. Okay. So... At that point, Moraine busts in the room and says, Your wolf dreams are as accurate as a dreamer's. The Forsaken are loose, and one of them rules Ilian. Bombshell. That's great. So, I have a question here, because didn't we learn, like, way back at, like, the end of the Eye of the World, that the Forsaken are already loose? They fought Agnor and Balthamel. Yeah. And they killed them. Yeah. Like, Moraine was there. She battled. Yeah. She didn't do very much, but, like, she fought them. Yeah. All of them almost died. Uh -huh. And they're like, oh my god, there's Forsaken. And like, you know Beelzebub's around. And we don't know exactly much about them. But we also know that like, Landfear's roaming around. Yep. So it's just kind of weird that they're so surprised over and over again that the Forsaken are here. Or like, in the world. Yeah. Are you pointing out a plot hole? I thought no. you said there weren't any plot holes. Not saying it's a plot hole. I'm saying give me an explanation for that. Um... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe Maureen just thought because Balthamel and Aegonor were like decrepit and They were they were closer to 
the we'll say the to the surface yeah 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 they were definitely like aged yeah and even though they were threatening they weren't like rude like moving pieces on the chessboard of the world yeah and like ruling a kingdom apparently like right and we thought that you know i guess she thought that maybe some of them got loose but now there's confirmation that like they all are okay okay well that's really important too and we just talked about last chapter with the whole vision, I think it was from Egwene, where she saw men and women breaking out of a prison and, like, putting on crowns. Right. So this would be, like, a huge indication that this all makes sense. Well, sure. Okay, whatever. So, chapter 44. Yeah, let's get into it. Hunted. Hunted. Good. By Shadow Brothers. Yeah. So we get the Flame of Tarvalon symbol, which is, like, that I said I wipe teardrop yeah symbol yeah you were gonna come up with like a name for it maybe I or don't something have one. okay female half a flame of tar valon works sidar yeah. works yeah exactly so perrin gets up to get dressed and asks moraine if they're gonna leave now and she says yes unless you want to make better friends with samuel 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 yeah. okay yeah. which is very close to ishmael well sort of it's, it's closer to samuel but it's samuel yeah it's like the last put an eye <laughs> in front of it and it's like ishmael basically okay we have we have heard the same before we this isn't have. like a new one so no so moraine gives fail yeah because yeah. okay so here's the thing at the end of the last chapter she goes i'm fail so i'm on board with calling her fail because that's clearly you know she's not giving it up that's what she wants to be called so let's call her fail that's what she's called gotcha okay but moraine gives her another out here and says, if you want to go, now's your chance. See ya. Yeah, well, and that's interesting because that's just what Land did last chapter, too. Yeah, he did. We I don't skipped think we, over that. We, we did yeah. skip it, but he did the exact same thing where he's like, hey, Darkhounds, you can leave. All Like, on my word, not even Moraine's. Yeah. Um, and although scared, and although clearly scared, she says, no, she will continue with them. So really stubborn about this. Yeah, and then Moraine says, well, we got to move now because, quote... Lord Brend will f- soon find out that one of his dark hounds is dead. And that means a warder's here, so he will come looking for the Aes Sedai. Which is interesting. So who killed the dark hound? Did Lan or did Moraine? Lan. Okay. Yeah. I think Lan found it and killed it. Unless Moraine did, but I doubt it. Well, it kind of makes sense that, like, because, I mean, realistically. Just her order of events, like what she says, is yeah. the dark hound's dead. That means a warder is here. So if he finds yeah. the dead dark hound, probably with its head chopped off or something, yeah. he, the only person who could probably do it would be a warder. Right. So. so Perrin is all consumed with this idea that Fael wants something more from him. She does. Because, she does. Because only a crazy woman would continue on this journey just for the story. Yeah. And I have to tell you, this is like literally exactly what Loyal is doing. He's continuing <laughs> on this journey with them literally just for the story yeah but she also wants like uh we'll say master a nora's rooster so <laughs> yeah get it i got it okay <laughs> it's a cock joke it's a cock joke okay yeah so they go get their horses and the innkeeper nieda is there and maureen tells her that she has to leave like get out of Ilian now You've obeyed me for a dozen years. Do you want to start disobeying me now? This is pretty huge. This is big. Well, I mean, and it's the whole like tracing back. I think it was maybe way back in like Camelon or Bearlon where she told the innkeeper like, hey, I was here. And then he started like He's mansplaining. Like, no, no. Yeah. And then he got his inburn yeah, down. So uh-huh, he can't did. remember where that was. Was that? Bearlon. That was Bearlon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's kind of like a similar situation where she's like, it's going to get traced back to you here. You got to pack your shit and go. Except that this chick's like, okay. Yeah. I don't know if she's actually going to leave, but. I mean, this is the thing because she also still doesn't believe like the gray men are real or the. Yeah, she sort know, of laughs after this too. It doesn't sound like she's going anywhere. No, I hope she does, but she doesn't say, okay, little lady. Yeah, she doesn't do that. She just Don't like... <laughs> worry about me here. I can take care of myself. Yeah. You know, like that asshole did. Exactly. He deserved to have his. He deserved to have his, <laughs> his in... burned down. Yeah. Uh, good memories. Oh, yeah. Good times. So, Moraine also has a horse for Fael to ride on her own now, so she doesn't have to hold on to Perrin. Nah, phew. Phew. So, Moraine says that 
Samuel? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get it wrong every time. <laughs> Didn't send the gray men, but he did send the dark hounds, but he probably doesn't know Perrin exists yet. So this is like huge. Yeah. So there's different people gunning. Well, we know that though. This yeah. is not news to us. It's not news to us, but this is still news that also like you wouldn't send dark hounds and gray men to like double up on a mission here. Right. But the dark hounds probably are reporting about gray men hunting this guy. Possibly is what's happening. Yeah. yeah. And we also don't know like how that whole, you know, communication works. Like if dark hounds can talk, like right. how, how does that message get passed? Yeah. It was kind of like the whole Drakkar thing. How does that reporting system work? Right. So, yeah. like, way back when. We don't really know exactly how that works. That's true. But I'm still assuming the Grey Men are coming from Bay Alzaman. Okay. That's, okay. That's okay. what I'm assuming. Because Lanfear doesn't really... Because there were Grey Men in the White Tower at the same time, sort of, that Lanfear was there. True. Okay. And... If she wanted those she girls seems, dead, she seems like a hands-on she, type of person where yeah, she's she going to do it really herself. She doesn't really seem like she wanted those girls dead, and the gray men were clearly trying to get the girls. Yeah, so especially different. it's like very confirmed in this chapter with the crossbow. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 kind of yeah. thing. Well, I mean, even and Perrin kind of sums it up for us too in this next paragraph. Yes, because Perrin is like super frustrated. He doesn't understand. We also skipped Lan and Moraine bickering. Oh yeah, it's 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 really funny. Like yeah. I like the there's clearly like a She's, bit of a rift. She says she wants to send him to the White Tower as a woman, as a novice, to be trained to obey. Yeah, and he's like, "Bet you glad that I didn't obey." Huh? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> because now we know about dark friends, yeah. the dark hounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's really funny that there is definitely like open bickering. Like we yeah. kind of assume that they discuss stuff before. I know, but this but, like, is relatively new. Lands out in the open now talking. Oh yeah. Like talking back here. Yeah. So yeah, Perrin is all frustrated because he really doesn't understand what's going on. Shocker. And he says, Why is everyone after me? Yeah. Rand is the dragon reborn. Well, not not only that, because he does definitely like drop that huge bomb, which is terrible, and there's repercussions to that. But he's like, if somebody else sent them, why didn't they tell like Samael that they were sending the gray men here? They're all dark friends, aren't they? Aren't they all on like the same side? Yeah. But this is kind of like confirmation that like again, no. Yeah. So that's big news. And then he drops the Rand Dragon Reborn bomb. Yeah, especially after, like, Fael just asked him. Oh, yeah. Like, are, are you, you the, the Dragon, Dragon Reborn? And he's like, no, it's just my best friend my from childhood. Buddy. Yeah. Glad. I know him. Leave, I know him. Leave me alone. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Fael gasps, and Maureen basically seals her to them now. Oh, yeah. This is so good. And then Perrin also thinks... When did I stop thinking before speaking? And this is why I 100% think it was Perrin that outed Moraine on the boat about being Aes Sedai. Oh, he yeah. He clearly isn't, like, he gets flustered yeah. really easily nowadays, I guess. Yeah. So he's just, like, can't, can't keep his thoughts Well, he's in. never had to think about so much all at once before. And then act on it. Yeah. Like, usually he can just go and sit and think for, like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> now he has to do stuff. Yeah. So they head out of Ilian and it's raining. Hold on. Hold what? on. What? We got to talk about what Maureen says to Nieta too. Because she says, like, you also have to leave right now. Now it's not like pack your shit and leave by tomorrow. It's like right now you have to go. And then also, if you ever tell anyone about this, people are going to come and cut your tongue out. And then if they don't make it to you, then I'm going to come and do that to you. Ah. And she kind of leaves it like, if, if they don't kill you, then I'm going to kill you. So... Yeah, because now you know too much now information. Now you know too much stuff, so it's, like, not good. Yeah. But, like, Maureen's just threatened, threatening people left, right, and She center. has a damn cause. Oh, and she does. And she did not work this hard for 20-plus years. <laughs> for Perrin. For Perrin. To screw it all up. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> they're riding out of Ilian. The rain dies down. And Perrin thinks... Phew, some good luck. And Lan says, no, idiot. Dark friends like clear nights and they don't hunt in the rain. They don't like to. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Shoot. Perrin hears a faint howl in the distance and then he thinks, oh, good. They're far away. They'll never catch us. 
And nope. Lan says, "Wrong again, idiot." <laughs> don't you have? You, don't you even read books? <laughs> Dark hounds never stop a hunt until they get you. That's why you have to just basically stop and kill them because you will never outrun them. They are. It seemingly they're way too fast. Yeah, and Maureen confirms for Fail that dark hounds and the wild hunt are basically the same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's kind of like because the whole old Grimm and the wild hunt. It's kind of like the stories say that's how like the end of the world happens, and that's why Land corrected her and it's like the dark one's not out and free. Yeah. And we've heard him say that before, but this is where Maureen's like, for us, it's basically like, if we don't kill him, this is the end. So yeah. Yeah. It's their wild hunt. So yeah. Moraine chooses a place for them to stand and wait for the Dark Hounds. Yes. So Loyal says, I knew I should have stayed home today. <laughs> yeah. Or like in general. Yeah. Yeah. He no, could be... that's uh, the Magic School Bus. Oh, that's is Arnold. It? Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Whenever they go on a field trip. I know that you still watch Magic School Bus because you're a teacher. Yeah. I do not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's like the classic line. It's like the kid who like hates going on all the adventures. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he says it every time. No? Okay. Someone will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, he really says, I knew I should have stayed in the steading. You know, I would have been married by now, but that could be a nice life. Yeah. Lots of books. Yeah. So... I need you to tell me a little bit more about this place. I'm having a hard time picturing where they are. Sure. They're out of Villian. Yeah. They're on a hill. Okay. There's a statue. A statue? Or I just, it was like a stone. A woman's face carved into a stone. There's remnants of a statue in this fairly open hill. Okay. And then this is the whole Moraine speech about like, you know, loyal things. It's an Ogier. Yeah. And we know that Ogier helped build all the big cities and everything like that. Yeah. So she's like, hey, lots of nations rise and fall, and are we going to leave even, like, you know, this much behind? Yeah. And it's, you know, a little bit like, you know... That's over the top and dramatic. It's quite... But that's kind of like Maureen's MO lately. She's very... Like, yesterday, she it was like... very dramatic. Eat yeah. your fish, because tomorrow we might die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like, ah... Uh, that wasn't yesterday. That was literally that was an like hour two ago. hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I get it. Maureen's a little stressed out. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine. So, Lan tells Loyal and Fail to hold the horses and wait for the Dark Hounds to come. Don't let the horses run away. They'll get spooked. And then Perrin strings his bow and Lan laughs at him and says he'll be lucky to kill one with He's that. like, go for it, man. You might get one. Yeah. But even he's like, my my sword's basically like, you know. Useless. Yeah. It's like. Against if they... like a pack of them. Yeah. So, seemingly yeah. like there's 10 coming. So, if Moraine doesn't do something, yeah. like no chance. Right. So the Dark Hounds are approaching super fast, and Perrin shoots some arrows and then does actually get one. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. And then he's super nervous and is worried that Maureen isn't doing anything. Yeah, I really don't like the whole angsty Perrin thing. No. Like, she's gonna do something. You just, Like, you don't know anything, man. Just wait. <laughs> yeah. So we get that this must be a really serious situation. Like, I know they've been in serious situations before. Like, don't get me wrong. Everything that they've done is dangerous. Yeah. Like, when they were running from... Like, the Trollocs and the Fades Trollocs and, like, and Wall the, of Fire. And the Merdral and the Wall of Fire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever. And, you know, they encountered Forsaken at the Eye of the World. Yeah, they've done that. Like they've yeah. Like, they've been in terrible situations with Moraine before. Yes, yeah. And what she does here... It's like leveling up, obviously. She leveled up. Oh, yeah, that's that's good. I, I will mention that we haven't seen her for almost the entirety of book two. Right. So do you think that she recently learned this? Because why wouldn't she have used this on the Forsaken at the Eye of the World? That's a good question, Danny. Or like literally... I'm not allowed to answer that. I plead... The, what is it? The plead the fifth? Yeah, well, I like... I'm not going to answer that question. Like, I get that... You know, she's not allowed and she'll be stilled and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, And, like, we'll get into it right away about, like, what's actually happening. But I just went, like... This seems new. It seems new. It seems new. It seems like a new thing. Well, and it's just, like, you know, it's one of those convenient Robert Jordan things that irks me. It seems that way, because but... Because we just saw, clearly, Balefire yeah. from Nynaeve. We did. Right? And we got introduced from Egwene in her triangrial right so like the testing yeah so it's all relatively new yeah in this book 
And now we're using it, using it, using it, using it. And it's like, God. God. We've used it twice. Uh, I know. Of, we heard about it once. We've used it it's twice from like when two different it's characters. It's convenient. Like, why couldn't a wall of fire and making the ground blow up yeah. where the ten dogs are running? Like, why couldn't that have been sufficient? That's a good question. <laughs> there are answers you just don't know them yet god it's so infuriating i know i know i know <sighs> i know you gotta you gotta like but trust me there I, are yeah. answers okay i know i just i have to tell you where my thought process is but right i now. do i do like your thought process because this does seem like a newer ability for moraine and it seems extra dramatic it does but again, this is like a brand new situation for them too, because like you said, with the whole like fades and Trollocs, that's something that like Lan and Perrin could fight. Right. But it doesn't seem like these dark hounds in like a, you know, close up hand to hand situation. It doesn't seem like this is something that they can do anything against. So it's literally all or nothing for Moraine. But for Moraine to do something that could have her be stilled if anyone knew that she even knew how to do this. Like, when so she that... knows how to make the ground blow up, you're allowed to fight Shadow Spawn. But that's a good... But this is a big point, is this does seem like a terrible ability she's not supposed to even know about. And she's, like, playing with it. She's not... like... Well, she used it to kill ten... Well, nine Dark Hounds. Yeah. That's not playing with it. That's, like, pretty huge. It's big. It's a big event. So maybe there's more reasons why she doesn't use this more or hasn't used it before. All right, it keep, just seems keep like in the back of your mind. it just seems like other it's, things it's could not, have been used. It's not, and I'll fight you on it. But okay, other things could have been used. No, what? I'll fight you on that, yes, but not they now. Could have. Okay, we'll come back to this conversation later. Later, okay, not Fine. now. Later in the future. So Moraine is waiting for the hounds to get closer, and then she shoots them with white hot flame from her hands and takes them all out at once. Boom. Bale fire. Yeah. Awesome. Parents are like, what was that? And she's like, something forbidden. And she can get in trouble if anyone knows that she knows how to do that. And by trouble, she means fucking stilled. Yes. So, so again, this is huge. Yeah. And it's not been used in 2,000 years. Yeah. Except for like 90 years. Except but that's... for literally last week. Yeah, yeah. Or like yesterday. Same time frame. Depending on. <laughs> but she does say that it's by vows almost as strong as the three oaths. So it's not in the three oaths, but it's like almost close enough. Right. And it's interesting because Nynaeve just sort of does it by accident. Yes. Because she's like super angry. That's also a big question mark. We kind of have to like come back to Right. Later. And then did Moraine have to like learn it because she said even for knowing how to do it it seems like it's something that she learned she's yeah. not just like pulling this out of thin air like Nynaeve did in the heat of the moment yeah okay this seems like a premeditated kind of thing okay so loyal says we better go there's more that could be coming yeah and maureen says well no probably yeah, yeah. not <laughs> Probably not. So, I mean, this is important. Like, Dark Hounds aren't, like, an unlimited resource the Forsaken have. They're not like Trollocs, it seems like. Yeah, it's not like there's just, like, a ton of these, like, crazy I get where Loyal's dogs. coming from, though, because everything that they've ever experienced has been, like, when the Shadow Spawns start coming, they don't really stop. So... <laughs> that sounds like a good song. <laughs> it's a really terrible song. <laughs> no, like, a okay, really okay. bad, like, country song? Or... No, no, no. Just, like, kind of like the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Oh, Smash Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But anyways, hey, like, he probably doesn't even have two packs, but you can't send two packs on the same job. Otherwise, they, like, fight each other because they're just big monster dogs. Right. Yeah, and that's where the whole, like, they do don't seem as smart as, like, FaZe do. Right, and taking out this pack might have annoyed him a little, but, like, we're not the ones he hunts. Yeah, they're not, like, main objectives here, so... Yeah. But that kind of leads back to, like, is it Rand is the main Well, that's when Perrin's target, like, so. is it Rand? Yeah. And Maureen says, maybe, or matt this and is let's so drop good. more information on fail here because, well she's in now she's oh part of the crew oh my god so not only did she just find out that the dragon reborn is in fact reborn and, and they people know, him. know him yeah <laughs> but here's the thing hunter for the horn yeah the horn's been found and, and blown, blown by a dude named matt, matt. <laughs> <laughs> so oh bad. so anticlimactic she's like Oh, uh, what? Well, all the heroes used to have names like Rogosh Eagle Eye, <laughs> and here's Matt. Matt. <laughs> Blowing the horn of Valir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I well, love her reaction because it's so good. She's like, the horn has been found, 
and blown. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> there goes my mission. Yeah. Because it's so funny. All of it. Well, and it just, like, leads back to the whole, like, when Perrin met Fael. Like, he knew the horn's oh, yeah. family. And she's like, I'm going to go find the horn and, in this place, like, by my by Perrin's and he's like, home. And he's like, yeah, go, go. that Go that way. Go Maybe it's there. It. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, like, trying to teach him something, and he, like, knows stuff. So it's, it's so funny. It's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then Lon says, you know what? Maybe we should get going, though. We have a long way to go. So they mount and head off. But Perrin thinks... Burn you, Maureen. I'll find answers somewhere. Yeah, it's just like super angsty parent I don't like, yeah. so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, on the same page with that one. Yeah. Scene change. Yeah, let's get into Matt. This is good. So good. Good scene change with yeah. Matt. So we get Matt and Tom camping out on the road to Camelin. Yes. And Matt has a firework in his hands and decides he's going <laughs> to cut it open even though he definitely shouldn't. This is so funny. He's so curious. Ugh. He's got to know. He's, he's got to figure it out. literally a child. So <laughs> he does. He cuts it open and then Tom gets super pissed off, but nothing even happens. And Matt's like, it's just rocks inside. What's so dangerous about that? Well, it's so funny because it's like he, him cutting it open is like exactly what happened when he was a kid. Yeah, and got and he trouble was, for it. He was confused then too because he's like, it's a bunch of dirt in here. Like, what is this? Yeah. It's like dirt and paper. And chemicals. And, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. chemicals. But it's like also funny because the first thing Tom does when he freaks out, he protects his harp. Oh, he doesn't funny. like try to like run away or like cut like duck and cover. <laughs> he like puts his harp <laughs> away to protect it's like it. Like Joey so. and his sandwich. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening here. His most prized position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Matt says whatever, man, and he tosses it into the fire. So I have a question for you. Yeah. How much do you know about fireworks? I mean, like not Me- nothing. Medium. Yeah. So so Tom's like, hey, don't you know that those things explode ten times as hard for air as for fire? So, like, with fireworks, it's very unlikely that a firework is ever going to explode just from air. Like, it needs an ignition source. Sure. To explode. Okay. But if you have, like, a super secretive guild, like the Illuminators, who murder people for, like, selling the secrets of how the fireworks are made, because they're clearly, like, this big, you know, secret so organization. So, they start this rumor about if you cut it open it'll blow your hand off what would you do if you don't want people just like yeah, figuring that's this good. out that's it's kind good. of funny but yeah. it's like there's no reason why fireworks in this universe are like super special and blow up just because you like open, open them. them like yeah. you ever played with bottle rockets like or whatever so i haven't but yeah yeah but it's but that's the point is like yeah, yeah so but it's I just probably kind of... wouldn't then throw it into the fire yeah but again it's the whole compressed so when i was in high school i did a a little experiment for it was a chemistry class and i had to make like an i can't remember why i did it but like i did it for school i remember that much sure you did but i cut a bunch of heads off of matches and you put them into a matchbox and you line the inside of the matchbox with the little like ignition strips like the friction strips and then you seal up the box when it's full of the match heads and you seal it with tape and when you throw it it blows up because it's like compressed and oxygen can't get into it because it won't work the same way if there's no like compression. Ah. So it's just kind of like funny that. Yeah, but like Matt doesn't know that and Tom doesn't know that. He doesn't. No, they don't. But it's they like. They know that when fire is added to fireworks, they explode. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like we're kind of learning more about like how fireworks work. So mm. not that I reckon. Don't do this at home, people. Sounds cool. Like Sounds like a good experiment. Do it yeah. with your children. Do it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> just joking. Don't do it. And I might be wrong, but that's like my personal experience with fireworks so far in my yeah, life. Yeah, you so. might be wrong, so definitely don't do anything Brett says. Could, could be, yeah. could be. So, Tom is just like, Jesus, man, are you trying to kill us? And it only sparks a little bit in the fire. And Matt's like, we're fine. Did you pick out that he also like opened up Master Alvira's clock? Yeah. He's like, She's oh, like, it's just a bunch of little like pieces I just wanted of... to see how it works. Yeah. You know, Matt has the makings of like an engineer. He does curious mind yeah 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 wants to figure out how things work and yeah i'm on board with matt like i like it he's like i probably could have even put it back together if they let me like maybe yeah maybe (laughs) he's got beat more (laughs) yeah (laughs) so then the interesting stuff actually happens yeah 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 and they are approached by some people and matt thinks well it's too late for honest travelers but he like sees them and he's like well they don't look like robbers like, one is a woman who's, like, dressed in, like, silk with a gold necklace. And yeah. And is pretty. And a couple of And only of dudes. robbers can be ugly. So, I have, a, I have a question for you before we get... Because this is, like, a very reminiscent scene. Yeah, you're telling me. Sounds really similar to Sounds something we saw. Sounds extremely similar. 
color. And mm. while you were reading, you said something, and the thing that you said was, I can't believe I let my, my guard down again. Yeah. Is this what you were referring to about letting your guard down again? Maybe. Because I remember you said that. And it's like the exact same thing that happened to Rand because you like didn't notice that these people were suspicious at all. And then these people are doing the exact same thing. Like, oh, nice fire you have. Can we join you? And then all of a sudden they're trying to kill Tom and Matt. I honestly, I don't remember saying that. So I don't know. Okay, you for sure said it. So in my mind, I was like, maybe she said that part, but. No, you know what? I read this chapter. It was in the last chapter. Oh, okay. Because I read this chapter when I was getting separately um, a pedicure. Okay. Yeah. So not that. Gotcha. No, 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 no. I was going to say, because that's so funny if it's the no, exact same thing. No, as soon as I saw this, I went, oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck, this is exactly the same. Danger, danger, <laughs> danger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wonder what it was in the first chapter, though, because not much happens. Yeah, because you were like, I can't believe I let my guard down again. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, I'll look back on it. I'm not sure. But yeah, that was for the first chapter, okay. not this one. But yeah, <laughs> because right away, when one of the people who approached them is a woman, I right away went, uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, no, this is bad news. And and at first, they don't tell us how many men there are. Like, I think that we only get, like, a man count when they're dead. Yeah. Sort of, or as they're fighting them. Because it was like, there's men and a woman. Like, that's really what it read like to me anyway. Yeah. So, this woman... And a bunch of men ride up. Like, that's what I wrote. <laughs> and it's not a bunch of men. It's three dudes. And the woman dismounts, and Matt thinks that she's pretty. It says there's four who rode into the... Ah, damn Yeah, it. okay, so okay. woman and three men. I just, like, am bad at reading. That's okay. <laughs> he didn't have to point it out. He I kind of had to. It. I had to point it out. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, anyway... She goes and asks Matt for directions to an inn. Yeah. Which right away is so, like, I know they're a little ways past where all the turmoil was. Yeah. But. That's just like a, not even trying. That's a terrible thing. Not even trying to come up with like a. Not even a little bit. They're literally camped out in like somebody's farmyard who doesn't know that they're there. Yeah. Just like in the wilderness, it seems. And so. Then a bunch of stuff happens all at once. Matt hears one of the men mutter something and sees a crossbow, like, all ready to be shot. And then the woman yells, kill him, fool! And then Matt throws another firework on the fire. And this one actually sort of explodes. Yep. Still sealed, probably. Still sealed. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom throws his knives to kill two of the men. Yes. And Matt gets the other guy with his staff. Yes. Clonks him on the head. But first he gets a little fancy and knocks his sword out of his hand. Well, because it's just like one dude like against Matt he's and like, that's not a challenge. You, yeah. Yeah. And so then he sees the woman walking towards him and he's like, stay where you are. Find clothes you wear for a thief. And then Tom just like throws his knife and kills her dead. Yeah. Tom's smart. Yeah. Oh, yes. But it's just like that old. But then like, Matt's like super pissed off at Tom for killing a woman. It's that whole like, you know. I, and again, I hate to keep bringing it back to like the how they were raised, but oh, it's like 100%, it's how exactly they were. It's like it the is. conservative viewpoint yeah. of like you know not as dangerous, but that's exactly the opposite. That like this is what Elaine and Nynaeve did to Egwene. Yeah, Egwene's like these women are dangerous. Yeah, I'm I'm still gonna channel just in case. Yeah, and Elaine and Nynaeve don't seem at all concerned right. that like when Abby you mean like up when we yeah with ran the into the IEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point, it's She's the like, exact same thought process. Just because they're women doesn't mean we need to be. Less scared of them. Exactly. Like, they can do just as much damage, so. Yeah. But Matt's just like, oh, we could have just, like, tied her up and taken her to the Queen's guards. And Tom's like, no. Yeah. And it's like she had a (laughs) knife ready. She had a knife meant for Matt. So She's clearly trying to kill him, so. So they decide they have to leave now, and they don't want to have to deal with any guards about this. So Matt sees to saddling the horses, and he sees... One of the men dead on the ground and tells Tom that this guy is a good ass swimmer. Yeah, so I have a question. Do you remember when those two guys jumped? And I said they're dead for sure. And I was like, Are you sure they're not gonna make it to shore? Yeah. And you're like, nah, they're dead. Yeah. 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 Well I mean there's only one of them that made it. It's such a good like callback. I think that one of them died. Oh for sure. It seems that way. So So I'm half right. Uh, <laughs> but it's such a good, like, writing callback yeah. that, like, someone previously hunting Matt is, like, back again. So yeah. 
I mean, persistence here, well, right? Well, and Matt recognizes him from the little boat yeah. of men that were trying to kill him. And Tom is like, no way. And Matt's like, no, I'm sure that's who this is. And he thinks that these men were after him because of this letter. Yeah, still and wrong on that point. he intends to have it out of his hands as soon as possible. Tom isn't so sure about the letter. Yeah, because he doesn't think there's anything in it. No, so. but Matt doesn't care. He just wants to like get going. So off they ride. Yeah. And that's the end of this chapter. But this seems a little coincidental. Like the similarities the are we talking? The similarities between matt and tom camping alone and being approached by a woman and some men yes and rand camping alone and being approached by a woman and some men yeah it's clearly both meant to kill them a couple clearly differences both though out of the sort of realm of where they should be and yeah. what they look like and however there was a gray man with the rand people there was so, a gray man with and it them. doesn't seem like we didn't get any references because usually when there's a gray man we get that whole like yeah, one yeah. guy looks super ordinary thing yeah we don't get that yeah but we do get that one of these men failed and let matt get away so obviously this isn't the guy from the balesman dream yeah right? it doesn't seem that way so but i mean it's also an interesting point because when the group attacked rand Rand thought to himself, I have to kill the woman first because she's the most dangerous. Yeah. And we had speculations like, was she an Aes Sedai, a channeler? Or... Like, what's the rationale behind that? Mm -hmm. It seems like, although he was a little bit bonkers, he was also right. Well, it sounds like that's Egwene's way of thinking too. Yeah. Maybe the woman wasn't an Aes Sedai, but just women are inherently more dangerous because everyone underestimates how dangerous they are. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. So second thing, or, well, two things I kind of want to point out. One, we got another reference this chapter where Matt realizes he's humming to himself and then he stops once he realizes he's humming songs. Yeah. We've gotten that a couple of times since he got healed where he's like humming and then he's like, oh man, I was humming a song and he like stops himself. Just something to point out. Okay. And then the second thing, we got to revisit. We learned these chapters about some really big, scary dogs called dark hounds that, like, you have to turn and face them, otherwise they kill you. Yeah. We know of one of our little crazy boys who's running by himself had an instance where he was killing dogs. We also know that his horse was found mauled to death. Yeah. And then he ran away from the horse and, the like, the dead horse body. That's true. So... Was Rand just killing dogs, or were there dark hounds chasing Rand? Mm, yeah. It's a good question. Well, it's a good point that I'll think about. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that it was dark hounds pursuing him. I don't know. I don't think so. You should go back and read that little, like, yeah, I'll you know, read instance. That little, it's like a, like a one paragraph thing, and it sounded like he thinks they're farm dogs. Go read it again, and then let's talk about it next chapter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I just want you to revisit that little instance. Okay, I will. It just seems like they belong to this Samuel guy, and we haven't seen them before. So, and that's... Oh, but we also know that from Ilian, there were armies going... Or soldiers going north. We do know that. To Mirandi, and Rand was in Mirandi, sort of. In and around. In and around, sort of. Okay. I'll think about it. Go back and read. We'll talk about it later. Uh, okay. You got you got some studying to do here. Yeah. I'm not convinced, though. Okay. I have to tell you. No, I, I just want to... I feel like it's one of those times you're trying to lead me off instead I know. of... I know you think because that. Because you don't... I think that it's bad for you to point me towards something if I didn't pick up on it myself, but now you're pointing me towards it, so it leads me to believe it's not true. <laughs> well, yes and no. The point I'm about spiraling. Us, the, I'm spiraling. I know, I know. But just kind of like, you know, the point of us doing this is to get you the experience of reading through this series two or three times on the first attempt. So I know, yeah. but I know. We'll but see. I'm always skeptical about things you point out You to should me. be, because some of the things I say are, like, definitely not true. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know. I appreciate you making me think. How dare you make me think my own thoughts. <laughs> But, uh, well, it's just so funny because, like, when you read that whole piece about Rand and the dogs, like, you were super, you were worried. 
Yeah. You were not, ha- you were not like having a good yeah, time. Yeah, I would like it better if it was Shadow Spawn and he like legit has it would no me- choice. It would make it seem less crazy that Rand's doing certain things. Yeah, but there are some things that he's just crazy, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. You know. Uh-huh. Okay. I think we can wrap it up there because I want to read on. Yes. We're going to get going. Okay. I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with Vince Lewick, Scott Williams, Derek Benton, Michelle O'Brien, Benjamin, Passion Socks, and Mozyme, with music by Audionautics.com. If you'd like bonus content, like bonus episodes, outtakes, Q&As, more fun Wheel of Time talk, early access, cool stickers and keychains, and also to support us making great content, visit us at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We love interacting with our listeners. Plus, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. We'd really love for you to come over and join our Discord channel for some spoiler or spoiler-free discussions. You can find the links at our Twitter page as well as on our Patreon page. Thanks again for tuning in because this really is part of the pattern now.